here we are. I'm loving it. Episode I'm loving it. episode 14 of Real Talk. Um, you said you were stirred up. Are you stirred I'm up? I'm still stirred up, man, okay. from last week. Uh, last week was, was turned, and the subject matter is, is important. It, I know we had other things you want to talk about, but... That's fine. The definition of, of Real Talk, how we have it here, is it's raw and it's uncut. So if we don't have something that that you want to share get off your chest and address let's let's do that we don't have to go through the script so with that being said if you haven't watched episode 13 yet stop this don't even go don't even don't even keep watching this go to episode 13 because now we're going to pick back up to episode 14 i just want to give the last i just want to give a quick summary we're trying to address okay why is it that uh now we're going to make this more general why is it that people jump ship from christianity proper or orthodoxy which is proper um and go to other religions um but we specifically started off with black hebrew uh israelite last week that's what we dealt with yeah last last time we we addressed that and and i addressed why that's becoming more prevalent um the issues yeah it's hands down the demographics of what we're seeing in white in, in in America as a whole, white people make up more, sixty percent. Therefore, they're going to make up more in Christianity proper. Mm-hmm. They address nothing about racial or about racial issues. And you're what's, saying the predominant white evangelical church a, does not a, attempt to address the things that cause a person to jump ship. Now let. Let's be clear. <laughs> I want to be clear so you can understand me. I'm not saying that they're right for jumping ship. I, I don't believe that at, at all. You should always, even when things are going so crazy and hectic in your life, and I've been through some crazy moments in, in my life with God that had nothing to do with uh, moral things, but people that I depended on and things like that. And it made me cling closer to God and say, God, help me get through this. Mm -hmm. Help me. And I hit up people who were sound in the faith to get me through. So my mindset, even when I was weak in the faith, still knew to cling to people who were mature, who could get me through that. So I don't want to big up anybody for jumping ship. But the reality is, though, the answers are not there. And um, so... With that being said, you talked about identity, you talked about insecurity, and we want to pick back... And suspicions. Suspicions. We want to pick back up and address that because you said something before in in previous episodes that all because when you get saved, it doesn't mean that like uh, the the, the human part about you just goes away. It doesn't go away. So that means even your thoughts, things that are going on in society, women being attractive, none of those things go away. away. So with that being said, that means all, so that means the nurturing you received growing up doesn't go away just because you accepted Jesus Christ. Absolutely. So therefore, if you've been nurtured a certain way, mentally, And your mental concepts that you've used to experience society, all because you get saved, that doesn't mean those things just go away. They could still cloud your judgment as you interact with society. But going to church with a desire to serve God, going to church with an attitude, I want to serve Jesus Christ, going to church with an attitude, I want to be a servant of the Lord. But because, as I said in the last episode, if you're not allowing the word of God to reshape your whole heart, that means in every dynamic of, or every aspect of your nurtured mindset, no matter who taught you, no matter who you were raised by, and you have a personality to that way of being raised, that you're afraid to detach yourself from the way you were raised because of the personality that was that you um of that person that was in your life grandmother grandfather father mother whoever you don't want to detach yourself from that less that that way you were raised because you'll feel like you'll offend them you're not ready to actually walk in the full counsel of god i'm not saying you can't walk in the full counsel of God. I'm saying you're not ready to walk into the full counsel of God because the full counsel of God is going to address your whole 
heart. Okay. But but based upon that, I mean... And that's why I say that... How many people really are ready? And, and I say that to say this. I didn't say that they're, they're, they're walking in the fullness of the counsel of God. Their heart is willing to walk in the full counsel of God. Okay. So when you hear the word of God spoken to you, you hear the word of God contextually being taught properly... Your heart hears it. It may it may sting. You might you might push a little. You might like uh, and you might you know rebel. Even you might even turn left when the word of God tells you to turn right. But at the end of the day, you can, you come to the conclusion. You humble yourself and you let the whole counsel of God continue to address your whole heart. Now, someone in that state of mind could have a hidden insecurity or a hidden suspicion on how they perceive society or how they perceive things going on around them, but it, not enough to provoke them to disagree with the gospel or disagree with the wisdom of God or to disagree with the standards of righteousness, but it's hidden there. It's down inside and it's not really surfaced enough because it hasn't been dealt with enough. It hasn't had, you know, feeding to, nothing's been really feeding it. Now, that's where I said last week, a person is growing their Christianity without addressing these things. Their Christianity could develop their, it could be a weak form of Christianity or they're being weak in carrying Christianity. Um, so so now what you're saying that, um, I agree more with, with, with what you're saying. I guess it was because we were addressing so much of the BHI movement mm -hmm. that, um, I looked at it more in the lens of a black person dealing with all these issues and not having godly people to address it. But when you look at it holistically and you talk about hidden issues, there there are now hidden issues that are starting to be resurrected from not even on the black side right. of, of, of believers who may have jumped ship. The only difference between a white believer, they don't have to jump ship because the issues aren't being addressed for them to have to jump ship. Mm -hmm. They can just go to a church who's just not going to address it. Right. So they're good with that. They don't have to jump yep, ship. Yep, yeah. Yep. Don't talk about this or I'm leaving and I'll go to another church who doesn't want to address it. Yep. Whereas the believer, the black believer has to go into a church where they're constantly telling you, we're not going to address that. Focus on this. Therefore, they do jump ship. On racial issues. Yes. So therefore, I agree that there are hidden things. That when the word of God is not being fully preached and addressed, um, that will expose us to see where we really stand with God. Are mm -hmm. we really trying to walk in everything that God has for the us? Full counsel? Or are we still trying to hold on to things that may benefit us while knowing these things are immoral and wrong? And so by that, I would say a person is storing up and and there's a weak understanding of the, the the righteous living or being in that fullness of God that you are addressing. But, well, not but, however, how do you, how do you work through that? First off, let's start this way. How do you work through that being a minority in an issue that isn't being addressed immorally and you know the demographics are stacked against you and you know that they're going to be hidden things that people are n never going to address and deal with. How do you work through that to not jump ship um, and still find the gospel, not still find the benefits of the gospel? Because we know the gospel ain't going to, the gospel is not about what mankind has done to you. Mm -hmm. It's about what you did to God and you sinned against mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So how do you work through that from the minority perspective and then work through from the majority perspective, because while the end goal may be the same, it's going to be dealing with two different psychologies on this. What may make a black believer in America jump ship is going to be different than what's going to make a white believer jump ship. I agree. So from the black perspective, how to stay balanced, right? How to stay, how to keep yourself informed of the gospel, keep yourself informed of the whole counsel of God, knowing that other people are not taking it as other people are not addressing issues that the whole God, the whole council of God would be addressing. Right. And, and you're noticing the whole council of God, as much as you're receiving the whole council of God, I'm assuming you're also over here 
receiving the whole counsel of God, but you're not addressing something that the whole counsel of God would be addressing, specifically, specifically racial uh, uh, dis- dis- discrimination, racial injustices. Mm-hmm. And as I am, as I am a uh, African American in America dealing with the whole counsel of God, and I want my heart to be serving God in its fullest capacity, and yet I don't see my counterpart, white Christian brother, accepting the whole counsel of God that should be addressing these moral issues, how do I not allow my heart get weakened to jump ship? That's the question, right? Right. And still find my, because you talk about identity. Yep. We all agree that identity should be rooted in, in, in Christ mm-hmm. no matter what. Mm-hmm. But how do you work through that? Mm-hmm. We understand salvation, but how do you work through it on a day-to-day grind? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it is a day-to-day grind. So that's number one. Like Christianity is not, is not developed week by week from Sunday to Sunday. If that's your Christianity, your Christianity is deeply flawed, deeply weak, and you need to understand why you're having the troubles you're having is because you're only going by it, by it. You're going about it week by week. It is a daily thing. If you're going to develop, you have to develop through the whole counsel of God in your day-to-day life, experiencing and interacting with society and people and culture and everything else that exists. You have to interact with it, but interact with it on God's terms and not your own terms. We're, we can agree to that? We can agree to that. Okay. Now, how do I keep myself grounded? How do I keep myself from abandoning the faith? I have to, a number one, a number one, recognize that my sole existence is premised on God himself. And from there, I begin to learn of the beauty and the creation of God. And through the word of God, understanding he has created all of us equally and that equally he wants to bless and cause us to enjoy what he has offered through the word of God and understanding the gospel message and understanding the, uh, the, the, the message of Christ. By understanding that, I realize now that my life should be devoted to exercising in all of the moral excellence the word of God reveals to me. You with me so far? Because I'm building up. Because I'm really working on a, a, on a, a, a mental thread of making a person recognize that my obedience to God cannot be contingent on other people's obedience or lack of obedience to God. I can't take a break because I don't see others as assertive and as committed to the whole counsel of God. So that's something that the word of God is going to make you understand. You can't, you're not going to walk in an independent state of mind for yourself. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, uh, I should be able to see others do it. And because I don't see others do it, I feel free enough not to do it myself. That is not the way the word of God is going to deal with you. Absolutely. It's going to be totally making you aware of your reverence is to be completely yielded to Christ. And that whether others do it or not, that has nothing to do with you. That you yourself have to be, you still have to be very devoted to walking faithfully with God. Now again, I'm not saying you're not going to feel the threat the threat of jumping ship. You're not going to feel deserted and frustrated and you're not going to feel uh, an attitude of, you know, uh, upset, feeling angry because of what you're noticing in society and noticing in society how your other counterparts are not taking seriously what you feel like they should be taking serious based on the whole counsel of God. Like, why are they not upholding this moral righteousness that I know the word of God is calling us to uphold? Why are they uh, shunning this one aspect of morality, but want to highlight another aspect of morality. Meaning, why are you shunning moral, or why are you shunning racial uh, uh, injustices? You're shunning that, but you'll tr- you'll you'll trumpet the cause for abortion. You'll trumpet the cause against the LGBT community. 
Mm-hmm. So me as a minority will be like, yo, why are you so oppo- why are you so opposed to them, but you're not opposed to the racial injustices that are going on in uh, Black America? And that was hidden to some 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 believers. Black believers didn't really see that and pay attention for a while. It was just like, no, they're committed to the scriptures and they see it. Until you see, like, and like I said, for the newer generation, people like myself, people in their 40s and 50s would be like, no, we've seen it. But people 20s on below, 30, young 30, 20s below are now seeing that. And they're like, oh, wait a minute. Like, no, you're, you're not. And I'm just, just gauging that for you to see, like, the hidden things. Like, okay, now what do I do with the fact that, like, you over here quoting verses, but you're not really living the verses that yeah. you're quoting yeah. over here. So, um I'm just allowing you to continue to work through, but just given the perspective of that was hidden. It wasn't something that we seen until, okay, yeah, we see you fighting against this. Okay, yeah, we with you on that. That's immoral. We see you fighting it. That's immoral. Now this going on. Yeah, kind of less not. You know, oh man, I want to, I want to go in a certain direction, but I don't want to lose track. I, I really want, because I really do believe that the black generation 40, 50 years ago their mind was conditioned completely different than this new generation, uh, black generation. The, the, the black generation of today, their mindset is... Believers new. or non-believers we're talking now? Uh, yeah. yeah, I got I to gotta kind of like... I want to say I want to start off as a non-believer, Hello? but it carries over with them. As I said earlier, the way you've nurtured yourself... If you're not willing to accept the whole counsel of God, you'll still go to church with an attitude that I love Jesus Christ, but you're not letting the whole counsel of God address your whole heart, and therefore you'll hold on to certain nurtured behaviors that you will just not subject yourself to address. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So this, so when it comes to a, a black believer, even within that, there are some uh, mentalities, there are some uh, attitudes that are still surfacing that are affecting one's ability to, to have clear judgment on how to perceive what's happening today. So, but I, I, I can't get into that. I, I really want to get into that. I want to go into a, a lineage from the, 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 let's stay focused. Let's I will, stay. but I'm just saying there's, there's a whole mindset of the, the, the black community in the early 1900s into the twenties and thirties, up to the forties and fifties into the sixties and then at the seventies going onward, you got a whole different generation of, of thinkers and it's different and they're 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 not they're not taking shorts they're not accepting anything they want everything explicit what explicitness you showed us early we want the same explicitness when it comes to our rights that's what we want and we're not taking nothing we're not taking anything and rightfully so but it, it when it comes to christianity it affects your ability to see the holistic picture of God's grace through all of that. It affects your ability to make good sound judgment towards a whole nother group of people because sometimes we paint everybody with the same brush a lot of times. Yeah. And then therefore, we can't have dialogue, we can't work through issues, we can't dial, uh, we can't have conversations, and it makes it very challenging to work through what it is that people are blinded to willfully and feel comfortable to understand why they've remained blinded willfully to address issues. You with me? Yes. So, so I haven't finished the question, but that's okay. Go I ahead. know. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let All me right. try to interject and, ahead, and get some things. Mm-hmm. So, I understand where you, where you're, where you're going with things, and 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 how you're working. I. I just have a, a question or, or a thought of going back to the hidden piece. Yeah, yeah the hidden piece. Okay. Believers a, a, as a whole now, yep. not even addressing yep, minority yep, or nothing yep, like yep, that. Yep, yep. There needs to be a better understanding. You talked about how we've been nurtured. I don't think enough of that gets brought up in, in Christianity in America of how much that affects us in how we even do our Christian living. And why I say that is because there are a lot of hidden things that we don't even know until something happens. And then we're like, well, we've been raised to always believe this. And it's like, according to scripture or according to what, how you been nurtured, raised people said black lives matter, uh, five, six years ago, 
and some people in the church heard that and something resonated with some people worse than it did with with others hidden things that they didn't think was there they're angry and upset and i guess the question for me is what do we do because that's going to be a constant daily grind the 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 racial thing let's say 20 years down the road right racial things get 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 better there's still going to be something in society moral or morally or something about ourselves that we see so what do we do in that moment talk to us about the patience that we should have with one another uh with different backgrounds of how we've been nurtured let, let's let, let's go there talk to talk about how we should have patience and why biblically we should do that even though there could be something like a person could be in the wrong but talk to us about why we should have patience and and the grace that you're talking about um to help people work through those those issues instead of me being like oh you're racist because you don't you're, you're upset about hearing black lives right, matter right how do we work through that and vice versa how do how does a black like, how do we just work through that as believers? Because there, it seems to be like the jumping ship uh, or the dividing of the churches to make it say, you know what, I'm going to go do my urban thing over here and you do, go do your uh, thing over there is the moment the conflict happens, the moment the whatever, the moment Black Lives Matter gets stated and the moment they're like, yeah, I don't know if I'm agree with that. There's like a pause in which we should be like, all right, let's come together where we're just the come together and doesn't seem like it's happening in America as believers as okay. a whole. So let me just say this real quick. Let me say this first before I get into addressing okay. that. I'm not subscribing to anything or anybody who polarizes philosophies for gain. Let me explain what I mean by that. Yeah, explain that. I'm not I'm not about to get into any discussion debate or just or anything with people who are holding when I say polarized I mean they're holding one issue against another issue and they're only doing it for the sole sake of gain political gain financial gain press uh some kind of uh public gain being a public figure whatever it may be every issue that surfaces in America in the world every issue that surfaces People are always trying to find an angle to capitalize on it for their gain. They're not looking for the root problems. They they like the problem to exist because Agreed. it brings out more energy for what they are positioning themselves for. Agreed. And therefore, they're profiting from it. I'm not having a dialogue with people like that. I'm not getting into groups with that kind of... So I have to say that first in order for me to talk about patience because I'm not going to be patient with that person. Because I know their agenda is for gain, not to work through and them coming with an open heart by saying, I just don't understand why you guys are so angry. Nobody's being racist anymore or whatever. I Meaning hearing a white person say that. But they're ignorant and they're, they're, they're not gaining anything from it. They're just clueless, but they want to hear. Mm-hmm. They want to, I'm going to be patient with that brother. As ignorant as that might sound to me, and in my heart I might be like, this racist white man or white woman, I'm going to work with that person and be like, you know what? Let's sit down and talk. Explain to me what you what you can't see. Help me to understand how you could comfortably say, I don't know why you guys are mad. I don't really see racism anymore. Yes, I agree it was back then. So you're so I would have to hear them say then you only identify with racism when it's explicitly expressed. Not when it's implicit meaning you can't see agendas that are actually supporting racist mentalities. Not the explicitness of hanging a black man, raping a black woman, um, uh, going after and, 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 and just shooting a, a, a young black kid that's in a hoodie because you've allowed that stereotype to impose into your mind that person's a threat because they're wearing a hoodie. You, you with me? Mm-hmm. And so I'm willing to have patience with that person and sit down and dialogue and ask them, what is it that you perceive as non-racial issues or how you don't see racism? And as they go through their narrative, I'm going to hear they only identify with explicit racism, something that's very blatant. Black people sit in the back of the bus. Oh, that was wrong. That was wrong. Yeah, that was racist back then. But we don't do that anymore. You can sit wherever you want (laughs) on your side of town. Yeah, pretty much. 
Focus, focus, focus. Anyways, but for somebody who has an agenda and they're only polarizing this issue for gain, I'm not being patient with that person. I'm not even talking to that person. I, I can't because I know they have an agenda behind the issue that they are going to capitalize on. And so they're not really going to, they're not really willing to work through the narrative and they're going to support narratives that help their gain increase. So that's what I mean by that. Now the patience piece. I love transparency. If a white person came to me and said, you know, I think you guys are just over-exaggerating this whole Black Lives Matter movement. And they're not trying to gain anything. They're just like, they don't understand. They just are fed up with seeing Black Lives Matter signs. And they're just, their whole mentality is convoluted with, with stereotypes that are just affecting their ability to see clearly. But yet they don't mind having a conversation. I'm going to have a lovely conversation with that person because I'm just going to keep picking apart their mind, asking questions. Well, explain to me what you see. Why? How is that not a problem? How is this not a problem? Or why would you say this shouldn't be something that hurts somebody and that they're reacting to the hurt? Why do you consider that as, you know, uh, overreacting? Y you with me? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have, a, I'm going to enjoy having that conversation. So my patience is based on me knowing that as ignorant as somebody may sound, underneath all that, there could be a good heart that wants to do better. And I can't judge that. I can't say it doesn't exist there. What I'm hearing out of their mouth might sound really crazy, but let me spend time working through that and come to a conclusion. Now, if at the end of the day, this person says, you know, I just... I'm sorry, I just, I've been raised, I, I don't trust you black folk, and I'm just probably never going to trust you black folk. All right, then I guess our conversation is over. Then it's over. But for people who want to learn and work through things, I'm going to spend the time being patient with them. I'm going to talk, and I'm going to ask questions, and I'm going to hear what they're saying about their perspective of what racism is to them, and then start working through all of that. Um. So I just had two quick things to say uh, about everything that's been addressed, especially from 13 to 14. I think a, a lot of I want to hone in on the fact of value, OK, which addresses identity. For me, what allows me to be able to forgive the most whatever racist, the most the Most evil, whatever the case may be, is the love of God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That transforming like my mind and, and knowing how much I didn't deserve mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And I think what causes people to jump ship, at least from a, a minority perspective, a black perspective to BHI or Nation of Islam, is we lose sight of our value in God because we're not seeing value coming from society on a day-to-day -day basis. From work, we're not seeing the value. We're always getting, like, you know, beat down by a, a system that says it's for you, mm -hmm. but you have to get laws in place 90 years later for it to really be for you. We're, you're constantly seeing no value there that it bogs down on your mind for you to see the value uh, of God and that's not good it's not right and and that's not what we should do mm -hmm. but I just think um it's worth a point of addressing that maybe you're not even black and you're just a, a believer watching who may feel the same thing as well that I it's tough for me to see like my value in God when society around I mean it'll be tough as a majority race for you to say that but society around me just I'm not hearing it from my parents I'm not hearing it from whatever the case may be and I agree to a degree that, you know, that is still you that's not strong, a strong foundation. You, a strong foundation wouldn't be so worried about how society views you. It wouldn't matter about the grind. You'll constantly stay rooted in the fact of it will challenge you, but it shouldn't. It should allow you to jump ship. You should exactly. have like a David mindset. Exactly. You should be crying out like right. but ending them psalms by saying, but I'll trust in you. Yeah, I'll put well, my faith, you, yeah. you know. Um, and I like the word yet, because it shows contrast. I could. Yes, yes, yes. But yet I will instead. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And and lastly, always know that the enemy is at work, even if it's even if it's believers in their ignorance. Mm -hmm. That the enemy is at work trying to get 
uh, a person to devalue themselves. So when I look at uh, believers, especially minority believers, and them not seeing value and for them to go jump ship, it really bothers me because I know where a lot of it is like rooted in. It's really the lack of seeing value and them diminishing how much God like loves you, mm-hmm. regardless of, no, I wouldn't say regardless, with your race, with your ethnic, with your diversity, he loves you and he doesn't want you to make your skin color less. He doesn't want to make your hair a certain whatever. He accepts that and embraces that, yet society won't. It won't call you professional. It won't. So you constantly have that working against you, but it, it is the enemy. No matter if it's a pastor who, who has this theologian degree, he's being influenced by that. And my heart goes out to that because I just know that the enemy is working very, very hard to remove those verses in the scriptures to get us to see how valuable we are to God, how we're created in his image and likeness, how much he's seen how jacked up we were and he still yet put on flesh to die for us. Mm-hmm. And we lose sight of that um, so much. And it's not enough of that being addressed and stated like, homie, you don't got to go to a whole ideology where they only focus on getting you to see your value there and nothing else right um no we can show you that scripturally even if other uh believers can't do that so um just want to tie that back in and and just say address that that the value should be back on what god has how he's created us and what he's done for us in spite of and yet it's tough to see that in a society when you are minority and churches don't want to address it I agree. Any other? No, I think that's a good closing point. Just because we could be on this, but that's that that's a good closing point. I think we should just stay there for the viewer to just digest. have something to digest on and, and think on leaving. So I'm good. All right. Be on the lookout for episode 15. Please make sure if you're not a subscriber and you're watching this, please subscribe to our Righteous Unity channel, uh, U-N-I-T-E-E. And make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend, share the video, like the video, click the, the notification homework. bell. That's the homework. Get a get an extra subscriber. Okay. Tell a friend, make sure that they subscribe to this to this YouTube channel. God bless.